Today, I'm going to be taking a look at the satirical slasher genre, and specifically the film Scream. To do a quick overview of the film, Scream was released in 1996 and directed by Wes Craven. For a quick synopsis of the film, the town of Woodsboro is terrorized by a killer known as Ghostface. Upon realizing the murders could be connected to her mother's death, high schooler Sydney Prescott teams up with the police force, news, and her friends to try and uncover the identity of the ominous murderer. Looking at the ideology of satirical slashers as a whole, they take common tropes and cliches from regular slasher films and play into them for moments of comedic effect or commentary. Satirical slashers recognize how outlandish slasher films can be at times, but instead of critiquing them, instead go further in depth with the characteristics in order to convey a message. Some of those characteristics used from slasher films can be the final girl, a faceless killer, an overabundance of gore and death, and usage of isolated locations. All of these elements are used throughout the film, and specifically in the scene where Sydney's friend Tatum is killed by Ghostface. Is that you, Randy? And what movie is this from? I spit on your garage. Lose the outfit. If Sydney sees it, she'll flip. Oh, you want to play psycho killer? Can I be the helpless victim? Okay, let's see. No, please don't kill me, Mr. Ghostface. I want to be in the sequel. Cut, Casper. That's a wrap. Randy, what the hell are you doing? When looking at the narration for the film, Scream uses mainly restricted narration. We know as much as the characters when it comes to the identity of Ghostface or who and when his next murder will occur. While the characters don't specifically know that they're inside of a movie, they comment on how similar the situation they're facing feels in correlation to other slasher films, even going as far as to say that they're a part of a franchise or that they need to work within the rules of slasher films. In the previous scene, we see the restricted narration by knowing as much as Tatum when it comes to the identity of Ghostface. She also comments on how they feel that they're in a franchise by saying she wants to be alive in order to make it to the sequel. Misan-sen is another key element featured throughout the film. Adolescent and innocent characters tend to wear brighter and more unique clothing throughout Scream, whereas Ghostface sports an all-black cloak, which quickly separates him from the rest. Looking location-wise, a lot of the locations are similarly decorated and even considered condensed, adding a sense of confinement for the characters, which helps signify a sense of fear throughout the film. Sound and editing are two other very important elements when it comes to the satirical slasher genre and Scream specifically. During scenes that are slower and feature conversations, cuts are very average length and normal, but during action scenes, they're usually faster and more dramatic to help keep the sense of fear for the audience. Similarly, sound is usually normal background music during the conversations and slower paced scenes, but also during action scenes, it's louder and more dramatic to cue in the viewer with a sense of fear. Similar to how locations are usually within confined and condensed spaces, cinematography acts the same way in the film screen. There's usually shaky cameras and close-ups during action scenes to instill a sense of fear and confusion for the viewer. But during slower scenes with conversations, the camera is usually more still or either panning around and usually farther away from our subjects as if we are stalking them and they are unable to notice us looking in on them. The techniques used throughout satirical slashers not only comment on slasher films as a genre, but also are used as irony to comment on social ideas. In Scream, topics such as high school popularity, sex, and violence are all main ideas that the cast of primarily teenagers comment on. While the plot of Scream mainly focuses on unmasking the serial killer, the recognition of overused slasher elements provides space for the film's story to criticize social norms. They keep the idea of the final girl with Sidney Prescott, but instead of just using it as a cliche, they use it as a moment to comment on what it's like to be popular in high school and desensitized to violence around you. The final girl, along with many other elements in slasher films, are used throughout Scream to make a point on the commentary that they're trying to discuss. Thanks for watching.